Welcome to Inside Kern. I'm your host, Katie Price. You're going to get an inside look into Kern County government services and how they contribute to our community. With our all access pass, you'll get to go behind the scenes into places you've never seen before. You'll go on a ride along with a restaurant inspector and get an inside view into another county department that affects businesses all over Kern County, the Graffiti Off program. But first, where would you want to go if you fell 40 feet from a tree? We're in a serious car accident, or worse. Kern Medical Center is Kern County's only trauma center, meaning it's uniquely qualified to handle severely injured patients 24 hours a day. In this exclusive Inside Kern segment, we follow an ER doctor through her shift to find out what really happens at KMC. Well, for me, it's about serving the community. When I started working in a free clinic and then when I started working in county hospitals and emergency rooms, um, part of it is it's so democratic. When you're an ER doctor, whatever comes through the door is whatever you see. You don't get to pick and choose. You don't decide if you like their insurance. You don't decide if they can pay you or not. You don't decide if it's going to be something that's easy to take care of. It's just whatever walks in the door, it's all your problem. Mom says looks the same as when she, before she got intubated last time. And she's in bed 10? Yes. Of course. But I told Darren to go ahead and see the person. Darren's not going to take one of the traumas. So Scott and I will do the traumas. Um, oh, is there a trauma coming? There are two coming. They're not, I guess they're not activated. Jack took the call. Um, I and they're going in 04. No. And then Z, whatever this is. Z4. Yeah. Okay. Your mommy's just down the hall. She's going to be okay, all right? Mommy wants us to get off the floor. Yeah, I understand. Backseat passenger uh, in a car seat, fully restrained. 40 mile an hour accident. Um, mom pulled him out. They were ambulatory, weren't even going to go, and then they changed their mind. Uh, see, mom was going to turn, and another car came straight through, so they pretty much went head to head, yeah. Head on. Head on. Hi, how are you? Huh? You're two, yeah. huh? All right. Good night. All right, let's get Hello. him off this car. Can you go back or make it real quick? Let's get him off this board here. Dr. Winter. You're two years old. I'm fine, but I'm right in the Is he complaining anything? No. Is he walking around? Yeah. He no loss of consciousness that we know. Oh, look at that. Can you lift this leg for me? Lift the other one. There you go. Can you lift your hands up? Stomach muscles. Lift your hands up. All right. Is that okay? Oh, right. He wants off the board. There we go. Did he take your helmet yeah. off? Where are you going? He's going <laughs> for his mom. Okay. Yeah. He wants his mom. Hang on just a second, okay, sweetie? He thought everything was his helmet. He was restrained. Can you lay down real quick yeah. for me? Hold a good five-point course in just a second. All righty. Here, let's just put this on your belly here. You're going to be three in a couple weeks. You're going to be three? Three years Wow. Is your belly hurt? Uh, 15. No. Does oh, your head hurt? Uh, 15. No. Do your fingers hurt? Uh, we have four no. Do you want to take a look at your kidney? Yeah. Your heart? Let's look at your belly. Okay. Okay. Look. Look. This is great fun. Look at this. Look at it. It's going to be cold, okay? It's kind of cold. One, two, three. Look at that. That's why he has a minute Look at that. You see that? Whoa. Look at that. part of your insides there. Okay. Oh, wow. oh. She's on the way. Look at that. That's where you go potty down there. Huh? Yeah. That's fine. Is that tickles? Yeah. All right. Let's tickle you over this side, okay? Do you know what I'm listening to? Yes, I'm listening to see if I have to do the immunization. Do you know where your heart is? You know, I'm almost this way. Thirty-five. Winter. Hey, Chuck. Fine. Almost all the kids that we see who are restrained in car seats and are in car accidents do just fine. The vast majority of them, it's the ones that aren't in car seats that do badly. So, and he's clearly fine. Nothing hurts. He moves around. He talks. He doesn't have a mark on him. Mom actually looks fine too. So, she's been throwing up. Mm -hmm. And has this happened be before? Lots of times. Yeah, saw. Um, so she has cystic fibrosis. She um, has had chronic vomiting since she was three days old. Oh. Yeah. And most of the time she doesn't get in trouble with it. Okay. Yeah. But 
since she started having pulmonary involvement with her CF as well, yeah. um, when she gets even a little bit dehydrated, she may piss plugs okay. and then starts desaturating. And, okay. and so I called her, she sees the pulmonologist and the gastroenterologist at UCLA. Yeah. Um, and I called them on Tuesday when she started vomiting. Because since she got started on pancreatic enzymes, she hasn't been vomiting. Ah, you know, that's good. Except for when she's when getting she, in trouble. Okay. So okay. Um, I called her pulmonologist and they just said that it really sounded like she needed to be tanked up um, and you know get a little bit of fluid you know, to keep her from to keep her from getting plugged again. I right know, dry as a bone, dry as a bone. Okay. Um, so the last wet diaper that she kept was overnight. Darn it! Is she a hard stick? She's an impossible stick. Ah, I was afraid you were gonna stick. Ready? Ready? Let's run. Run, run, everybody, run. Come on. And she's just acting droopy and not. Thank you. I know. The girl um, is an interesting case because she has cystic fibrosis and she's getting worse, which is what little kids with cystic fibrosis do. So, The majority of it is a pulmonary disease, um, but it also has GI um, side effects. They have gastrointestinal problems and they don't feed well and they don't make enzymes that they need and their lungs don't work like yours and mine. And she's only two, and she'll only get worse. Uh, now I did, I asked him, he is able to see light, he is able to see movement, he is able to count fingers on my hands. I checked them both, because when I saw that I was like, oh, maybe you're right, screwed up. But uh, I had him cover each eye, he's able yeah. to count fingers on my hands. So I did I did a, a slit lamp as well, and I don't really see. It all looks fine. It seems okay. You can see, see back into his eye. I, I had a hard time seeing back into his eye. Huh. So. But again, I mean, I'm not super on my sit lamp exam either. Hmm. So. You have to be able to see, you don't see like a big opacity or a bunch of anything in particular, right? Or you just can't uh, tell? I'm just, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Hey, Jessica. Hey. Right there, thank you. Take any medication? Yeah. Are you allergic to any medication? No. Okay. Do you remember what happened? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you, did you, um, hmm. ah. you can just did you pick one and give it to him. Okay. Give me just put it, pull it up under anything. Uh, give me another one. Okay, very good. Breast down to clear by last. Ah. Okay, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Wait, 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 okay, wait, I know, I know. We're going to give you some pain meds, okay? Look at me, look at me. Okay. Follow my finger. Here, here, here. here. Okay, pupils uh, are three millimeters and reactive. Uh, open. GCSF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 15. Okay. Lungs are clear bilateral. Yeah. Does your belly hear it all? Tibia is sticking out of the ankle here. Let's, let's, give, him, uh, let's give him plenty of okay, pain meds and then, uh, um, pain, uh, and then take him off of this board. He's just going to be. Okay, I want to take this off. Okay, With tendon wiggle your fingers. Make a fist for me. Muscle. Push fingers out. Exposed. Okay, can you feel me do this? Can you feel this? Yes. Can you feel this? Yes. You feel this? Yes. Here? Yes. Here? Yes. Here? Yes. Back here? Yes. Okay. It all works? It all works. Yeah. Yeah. We've got everything cut so we can actually pull this yeah. stuff yeah. off. Can we have x-ray in here? Can I get a quick uh, chest? So, uh, I mean, that's Just roll them. I think we can get them off. Yeah. Let's roll them, then we can shoot. Them. We're going to his right. Are you good, Tony? Mm -hmm. Are you good? Good. Okay. So, and the idea is this whole thing. Are we tucked on the right hand side? Spine while you do it, okay? Yeah. It's all okay. big line. Hey, um, actually, let's go down that way because we're going to pull the board out. Mm. There we go. Are you good? Are you good? I'm good. Okay. You ready? Nice on and my slow. Count. There's no rush, nice okay? Slow. Nice and slow. One, two, three, roll. 
Oh. Here we go. Here we go. Good job. Oh, God, okay, Benny. Oh, God, oh, God, okay, Doctor oh, Doctor Baker's going to um, oh. touch your back. I want you to say yes or no where he pushes. Okay. It's very important. Oh, okay. You doing? Can you feel any pain there? Any no. pain there? No. Any pain? Any pain up here? Any pain? No, no, no. Nothing up through here. No. Oh. Okay. okay. Where was that? We're looking at a T8. T8, T10. Okay. Okay. Ah. Not too hard. All right. That was a 30 to 40 foot fall. Apparently he was trimming a tree and he fell. He landed on his left leg and he gave himself uh, an open fracture of his left lower extremity. So he snapped his tibia, his fibula, and it's popping out of the skin. So that'll have to be fixed. <laughs> Even though he landed on his left leg to, and it broke his fall, um, typically people who land with all the force on their lower extremity, land on their feet, the force gets transmuted up to their spine and they usually break their spine. Somewhere in his back, he actually broke a bone, too. You could tell when you're rolling, like, that's probably broken. He's ejected. We believe he was ejected. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a Okay, can I just have a little care, baby? Board, Sam, I can't. Like so uh, my tongue's uh, licking. He's got a daughter that was in the car that they are yeah. transporting. Is she okay? Take a deep breath for me. Uh, uh, can we give her uh, uh, 75 of fentanyl? Take a deep breath. Staff, I think it helps us. Good for you, thank you. Can at all? Can you feel me, can you feel me touching you? Can you feel that? Can you feel that? Uh, yeah, stop. Okay, all right, all right. So, do you know? Can you wiggle these fingers? Can you can at all? Can you can you can you can fun, touch? thank you. Okay, okay, we're gonna get you some pain medicine, okay? Can you take something else? Are we taking No, I'm not taking anything today because I have to try. Oh, 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 o
<laughs> Such a grumpy group. I know. I feel like you know that I only bring you the best x-rays. <gasps> what is that? What is it? Oh, I bet that's scarring. Scarring. It's a man who's been smoking too long. It's a woman. It's a woman who's been smoking too long. Is but the thing is, is if I ambulate her, I mean, her pulse ox sleeps is like 93. Oh, well. Ambulator, she's tachycardic. Her temp's 102.3. Oh. 102? Yeah, she's a long, well, she has, has a long history of smoking and like a 30 year history of asthma. She's been hospitalized multiple times, never intubated though. Hmm, interesting. That picture is with all that. What, are, what are these things follow, Adrian? That's just calcified something. Cartilage something. It doesn't follow any particular uh, lobe, though, or any any no. uh, I mean, that's not, I think it's on. <coughs> you can't see it on the model, right? So yeah, no, it's I on the surface. It up the model. It's on so here, so you can't see it. Well, shoot, does she have cockles? Yes. Oh, she does. Yes. Is she one of those dehydrated pneumonias that just doesn't show up on the first film, I even though she actually her has it? A liter of fluids, so but she's barely choking them down. Because she gives a good story for pneumonia. For pneumonia. I just wonder if it's an artifact, too. That? Sure. This? Oh, it's I, I doubt it. It's just funky. I wouldn't worry about that. I'd worry about what she has. What's just that? Ignore that. Yeah. 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 Show you artifact. You're an artifact. So, you don't think it's an artifact? That, no, I don't think it's an artifact. Thank you. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too worked up over it either. But her pneumonia, I'd worry about. Well, if I ambulate her and take her full socks, I mean, does she meet she admitted all criteria? Does she look like she can go home? <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, port spurs are all well and good, but I mean, you'd be able to look at something and be like, you can't go home. How old is she? Uh, I forgot. 40. Wow. How much has she been smoking? A lot. Too much. She has a history of heart palpitations, although she's never been diagnosed with anything. Current medications are back from Motrin and Clonidine. Um, no surgeries previously. She is out of date for tetanus and needs one. Uh, she uh, denies being pregnant and is currently having a menstrual period. Uh, she uh, drinks uh, malt liquor about 40 ounces every day and has been doing heroin up until 12 days ago when she turned herself into the authorities. So, uh, physical exam, she's uh, impressive for having uh, multiple baseball size abscesses hey, to uh, ten? I would say uh, the two here, one here, four or five. So my plan is to medicate her appropriately and to uh, incise and drain these. Two thighs and groin. Correct. Any of them over any large vessels we want yeah, to slice holes that. into? Yeah, I love that. I do that at times. Every now and then. And then we create extra work. <laughs> But no? I'm guessing no. Well, what's it you said? You don't think anything's over femoral artery? They're, they're really in the lateral thigh. This oh, one in the groin, I don't think needs to be drained, okay. so I'm not going to, you know, and, and I won't attempt anything that's going to. So you're going to give her morphine or something and then? Yeah. And where is she? See? All right. Well, it's not a very busy Friday night because um, when there are not enough beds upstairs, what they'll do is they'll put us on trauma activation only, which means we only see traumas. Um, and they won't even leave us on that for very long. But in the meantime, it means all the ambulance traffic gets um, shuttled somewhere else in town because we just don't have the beds to see the patients. So, so for the short term, what we see is all just trauma patients until they open us back up again to all ambulance traffic. So, Andrew. Hey, I want you to talk to Dr. Shapiro for a second, okay? He's going to man who's going to fix your arm. So you tell him everything he needs to know, okay? Okay, can you give me a thumbs up? I'm just going to hold your thumb. This, on this with side. the other hand, honey, with the bad arm. With the bad arm. Do the best you can. Okay, can you bend the thumb? Go ahead and try to bend that thumb. Yeah. You did it a little yeah, bit. Yeah. What other medical problems do you have? Huh? Bad back. Chronic, Bad back? Chronic back pain. And you're on some high dose pain medications for those? Huh? Where are you from? Are you from Bakersfield? Huh? Can you wake up and talk to me? Hi, 
Hi, cutie. Hola. Yo soy Doctora Winter. Puede? Can I see baby girl? What you got? Sure. Sure. Quantos pesos? Pesos? 38. 38? Kilograms or pounds? Oh, yeah, it's pounds. 38 kilograms. Wow, you'd be a huge kid, wouldn't you? You'd be like a 75 pound little girl. Did you see this? This is not right. Is this your arm? Can't be. Is this your arm? See how it's all bent? What is that all about? Did you see, Mom? Yeah. So, poquito de. Do you speak English? You do? Better, better than I speak Spanish, probably. <laughs> So we're going to give her some medicine, we'll give it to her in her leg, and then you'll watch and like after maybe two minutes she'll start to be like, oh. and she'll go to sleep, she'll go to sleep, she'll, sleep. she'll keep breathing and, and doing stuff, but she won't be aware, she'll be out. Um, and then once she's really out, then we'll line her, put the bones back where they belong, put the sling on, put on a splint, like a temporary cast, and let her follow up with the orthopods in clinic, okay? And then she'll wake up after maybe. 15, 20 minutes to wake up again. this. You okay, Mom? She's okay. Then she'll just wake up slowly. Maybe another 15 minutes. She'll start to slowly come around. Okay? Thank you, Dr. Okay, so this is a two-year-old with a history of cystic fibrosis. Um, Mom is actually an FP physician that trained here. Uh, just recently, di just actually diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. This kid's been tubed a couple of times, um, and what happens is usually the GI symptoms come first. Um, start get the ileus, they start the vomiting, and then all of a sudden she starts getting some mucus, mucus plugging, and then that's when she gets tubed. So she's been throwing up for the last three days. Um, so mom brought her in for a hydration uh, before uh, things escalated. Uh, so she's admitted. Um, she's going to be admitted to P uh, FP. Did they get a line in her? I think so. They would have told us if they had an FP. When I talk to the residents, I get the opportunity to watch them grow and change. And they, when they, it's, it's fun to see. It's a little bit like having kids, although they're going to kill me for saying that. But 
when they come in, they um, they don't know as much as they do, and you get to see them progress over the course of three years, and it's nice. It's fulfilling. It makes the job worthwhile. It's great. Dr. Winter and her staff saw 46 patients during their shift on a night when the hospital and all other hospitals in Western Kern County were closed to non-emergency patients. On a typical night, KMC's ER sees more than 100 patients. Now onto a department that gets called on 6,000 times a year and even has people adopting walls. The Graffiti Off program removes graffiti from the unincorporated areas of Kern County. Graffiti raises crime, lowers property values, and affects business all over Kern County. Here's an inside look into a department that's cleaning up Kern County one wall at a time. Out and now on fire. Graffiti is all over the county, but the main areas are the 9 through 306, 05, and 07 areas. The city of Bakersfield handles the incorporated area of the city, and the county program takes care of the unincorporated area, the rest of the approximately 8,000 square miles of the county. We can uh, match almost any color of paint and we are in the process of obtaining some paint matching machines. Uh, at the present, um, most of the walls are matched and they're already painted our colors. Uh, if there's a color we just can't match at this time, then we will have it uh, tinted to match. But we try to avoid that part because of the expense. Uh, we mainly uh, have a person sign a consent form stating that we will match the wall as closely as possible to their existing color. Well, our funding comes through the General Services Department. We're, we're a regular department that receives the funding. Um, we don't work under grants or anything like that. We have an Adopt-A-Wall program that we are really encouraging volunteers to get involved with. Uh, the county provides all supplies and we will show them how to paint the wall. They can adopt a fence, a wall. Um, no job is too small, so if they want to adopt a huge wall or just a small area, we're really, really happy to partner with them. Uh, the steps to uh, report graffiti are to call 32 Erase, which is 323-7273, and those calls go into a hotline, uh, then they're uh, distributed to the city or the county, and then we receive those calls, and they're given to a person who's uh, designated to be working in that particular area that day. We just uh, pooled our resources together and brought it to the attention of some officials here in the city and we're grateful that they got these people out here to help clean things up because it's becoming a nuisance. It's, it's terrible. A few years back uh, we needed some graffiti removed and I remember hearing an ad about I believe it's 322 Erase. When uh, a crew member responds to a site, they take digital photos of the tags and those photos go into a database and then um, they bring those pictures back to me at the end of their shift 
and I share those photos with the Sheriff's Department and the District Attorney and Probation. They're, they're super packed, they're busy, there's tagging all over town, there's only a handful of the people that can do that. So unfortunately, it's, it's still out there, it's gonna be a problem for a while, just, just wish we could get the people that were doing it. If they're a minor, it goes through juvenile court and the judge determines uh, the restitution or, you know, depending on how many times they've been arrested, that would determine the type of sentence that they would receive. Uh, the community responds really well. Uh, the business owners are very happy about how Nile Street is looking recently. Uh, we, we have direct calls that come into our office and also calls come into the graffiti hotline and uh, they're transferred over to us and we've had really good feedback from the business owners. But they come out if they can right away and they, they got a crew of like three or four guys, two trucks and they come out with their paint and they they do a good job. They're, they're working hard and they're very busy, I'm sure, all the time. It's been awesome. Um, used to be we had to call them and it was like take a number anymore. Uh, it's like they have somebody in the area daily. I mean, they just pass by and uh, they erase it. The job of the Adopt-A-Wall program is to help us maintain the integrity of the neighborhood. If you would like to partnership with us in the Adopt-A-Wall program, please phone 868-1605. The Graffiti Off program offers 10 standard colors, but they can closely match colors. If you see graffiti, call 32-ERASE. Finally, Kern County's Environmental Health Services Department plays a crucial role in the safety of our community. Recently, the county adopted a grading system for all restaurants. So what's the difference between an A and a B, and what's really involved in those inspections? Here's an inside look into restaurants like you've never seen before. Our job is to ensure that the activities that occur in Kern County and in the cities uh, are safe and do not negatively impact the health of the citizens or the environment. It ranges from protecting our food supply and protecting our water supply to the uh, overseeing of landfills uh, in Kern County to the handling of biosolids. My dad worked for the uh, Kern County Environmental Health Services Department for my entire, for all my life when I was growing up. And so uh, I, I started, I graduated from college and went to work for a civil engineering firm and then a job came open in environmental health and I uh, went ahead and applied for it. And I've worked here for a very long time, and my dad worked for the county for 39 years, 37 years before I came to work for him. So I kind of grew up going out on environmental health business and going to truck wrecks and spills and things like that. So it's kind of something that I've done pretty much my whole life. In July of 07, 2007, we instituted the ordinance that then uh, allows us to issue a grade upon completion of an inspection. Just like you've seen in school, it's A, B, or C, and anything less than 75 is closed. Good morning. Obviously, even though these are unannounced inspections, we clearly want to identify ourselves and why we're there and the purpose of our visit, and that's very important. Uh, so we, we do that. We make ourselves known and uh, make sure that we can have somebody in charge that's responsible for the operation kind of walk with us. We're going to go ahead and take a look at your kitchen today. You're due for a routine inspection, and uh, if that's all right with you, we need to look around a little bit. Go for it. Thank you very much. All right. If you got any questions, get you out. All right. Okay. But, so we, we literally uh, go from the back door to the customer, and so we're, we're following the flow of foods through that facility. And certainly there are some steps uh, in the handling of foods that are more important than others. So we, we'll, you know, everything from, depending on the area that we enter, we generally try to take a logical approach um, through the facility, but keeping in mind how the food moves throughout the facility, um, and that kind of dictates the chronological approach to our inspections. So the two violations we had here were the dishwashing machine not having any sanitizer residual and the wiping cloths not being kept. 
and a sanitizer solution. Those are major violations, but it's the same washer and sanitize, so it only deducts five points from their score. So their inspection today would reflect the fact that their score is 95 and their grade is an A. And so we'll have this A to give to them to post on the wall so that their customers can see it. I think that something that's unique here is that every single inspection is done electronically. And uh, all that information that we keep is now available the same day to the public. Whereas before we would have a file room full of files and to, or, in order to look up your favorite restaurant you had to make an appointment and come in and pull the file. By 6 o'clock the same day the inspection is put on the website. All of it. Not just the violations that were found but the actual words the inspector wrote. The whole thing. Because we think it's important to give that information to the public. Well, my goal in going into a, a food establishment is to get them into compliance and the easiest way to get them to comply with what they need to do with, to be in compliance with the law is, is to treat them with respect and to be nice and ask them to take care of these violations. Very rarely do you get rebuffed when you're polite and nice. Do you have your chest strips handy for your pop sink? Yes. This pop, pop sink can't sanitize her. Are they on the wall over here? Where are they at? Okay. We're assigned to a geographic area and we're in that area f for a couple of years. So you get to know your customers, but that gives you a chance to build a relationship with them. They get to know you. How often do you hose this area off? Every day. Every day. So it just hasn't gotten hosed yeah. yet. Not a problem. We're a little early. Restaurant operators get kind of nervous when you start changing inspectors around because inspectors are just regular people. We all have our points that we focus on, we all have our idiosyncrasies, we all have things that are more important to us than the next guy, and uh, consistency is good with a restaurant operator in his mind because he knows what to expect. This happens to be one of the McDonald's that I do a routine inspection on, as you can see their grade is posted in the window, the name of the establishment, the inspector, which happens to be me and the date that I did that inspection. This, this inspection was done on 11-9-07. So it, it's been a while since they've been inspected, but this is the grade and how it's posted with the name and the date of the last inspection. It's all right, no, you're good. This is a set of plans that they uh, submitted to us. It was reviewed as far as the uh, requirements for the uh, equipment being National Sanitation Foundation approved. We have an existing floor plan and the proposed floor plan and this is what we're going to look at today is what, uh, what they actually did. But we're cold in there. Okay. Off with the grout and everything. That's just fine. You know, it's it's kind of funny. People get all nervous and all worried. Oh gosh, the health department's here. And I always explain to them that they have nothing to worry about. We're not bad people or mean guys or anything like that. And that the only thing that they should be concerned about is the job that they do because I don't give out grades and I don't give out violations. I'm a reflection of the job that the people are doing for themselves. So when they're all happy about getting the A, I'm, oh, thank you for giving me an A. I don't give A's. You earn A's or you earn B's. So good, bad, or indifferent, the grade you get or the score that you get is a reflection of the job that you do. We're here to help, and if we can get out there and assist in the beginning, we tend to solve the problems before there's a, a big problem. So it's really that education and that relationship that you mentioned that is just key. Most of the greater than 4,000 food facilities do very well. The majority that uh, have received A's, we haven't quite finished all of our grading yet, but the majority have received A, the far majority, uh, probably greater than 80%. Uh, there are a few that, uh, that, are, that are challenged with compliance, and generally that's where we spend a lot of our time. Um, and when that education and that repetitive inspection and that process fails, we're then forced to take stronger action. To pay for food when you, go, when you eat out, to pay and then you get sick as a result of that is, uh, is kind of rough to think that uh, you paid for this food and then you got ill as a result of eating it. And that's the main objective of the food program is to, to make sure that when you eat out in restaurants or wherever you eat out, it's safe to eat. You're not going to get sick as a result of that. You have a nice day. Thank you. 
Last year, Environmental Health Services conducted more than 7,200 food safety inspections and gave out nearly 3,500 permits. If you'd like more information on any of these segments or another Kern County Department, you can log on to our website. It's www.co.kern.ca.us. On behalf of myself, the crew, and KGov, we hope you've enjoyed this look inside Kern.